Have you been considering buying a home and not sure about jumping into our competitive markets? Losing out on a home can be both frustrating and heartbreaking. So stick around to hear my five tips to help you win in a multiple offer situation. If we haven't met yet, I'm Laura Randall, realtor with Windermere Real Estate, CIR, serving North Snohomish, Skagit, and Island Counties. I share real estate tips on buying, selling, and all things home. So if you want to keep up with the latest that's going on in our area, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below. The real estate market is hot right now in Snohomish and Island counties and all throughout Washington, as it is throughout our entire country. With housing inventory being so low and interest rates at historically low levels, newly listed homes are being sold within a few days, sometimes even hours, and most times with multiple offers. This is excellent news for sellers, but not so great if you're trying to buy. If you're planning on buying soon and suspect that you're going to end up in a multiple offer situation, make sure to find a great real estate agent that has experience working in multiple offer situations. Now let's get to the good stuff. First things first, getting pre-approved. Now there is a difference between being pre-approved and pre-qualified. A pre-qualification is just a little bit more involved and it takes you as a buyer sending in more information to a lender or some information into a lender so that they can get you further along in the process. This is much more desirable when negotiating an offer. If you want more information on the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification, check out this video right here, pre-qualification versus pre-approval. When a buyer is purchasing a home, a deposit is included along with the purchase and sale agreement called earnest money. This deposit is variable, but typically about 1% of the purchase price in Washington. Making a larger earnest money deposit is going to show the sellers that you are serious about purchasing their home and give them more confidence in your offer. You can also make this deposit non-refundable. For example, once you get the inspection completed and all agreed upon, the earnest money can be released to the sellers at that point. Understanding what the seller's plans or preferences are is important in a multiple offer situation. Your agent should be talking with the seller's agent to find out what are their plans, what about their timeline, and what is important to them when they're looking at offers. This will give you an opportunity to structure your offer in a way that is more appealing to the sellers. Do they want a quick close? Do they need a few days after closing to move out? Or do they want to rent back? Are they worried about their home appraising in a multiple offer situation? These are all things that will get evaluated when a seller is looking at multiple offers and an opportunity to make your offer shine. A buyer has the option to make an offer contingent on several different items. In a multiple offer situation, waiving or having as few of these contingencies as possible is going to make your offer stand out. An example of this could be to waive the appraisal contingency or as a buyer offering to bridge that gap between the appraised value and the sales price if the appraisal comes in low. This can be very attractive to sellers when homes are being bid up above asking price. And while I don't recommend it, the inspection contingency is another one that is commonly waived in multiple offer situations. This is very attractive to sellers because all of a sudden they are off the hook for any repairs that would be requested during an inspection period. And my last tip, you guys, it's really another contingency like number four, but it's a biggie sell your house first. If you have to make an offer contingent on selling your home, it means that the sellers are essentially taking their home off the market while you try to sell your home, and typically about 45 days. If your house doesn't sell, the seller's home goes back on the market and they are starting back at square one all over again. This is a big risk for sellers and it's much more attractive for them if they have an offer ready to move forward to closing. If there's no way around making an offer contingent on selling your home, I suggest shortening that time as much as possible from that 45 days to make your offer more attractive to the sellers. So let's review the five things you can do to make your offer more competitive in a multiple offer situation. First, get pre-approved. Second, make a significant earnest money deposit. This is going above and beyond the typical 1% if possible. Remember, it gets applied to your down payment or closing costs. 
Number three, find out what's important to the sellers. Remember, you can use this information when structuring your offer to make it more attractive to the sellers. Number four, have fewer contingencies. And last but not least, sell your house first. There you have it. These are my five tips on winning in a multiple offer situation. Thank you so much for watching today. I would love it if you would comment below or connect with me on Facebook or Instagram at, at owning Stanwood Camino. I look forward to connecting with you soon.